Alex, how much are you sacrificing your own Hollywood goals to be so heavily involved with FYI films? Or did you never have Hollywood, quote unquote, Hollywood goals? Um, yeah, I, I have goals that are in alignment with what how Hollywood perceives success, but um, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything because I feel like this is my organic journey to being a filmmaker. Um, so I went to USC where we were very much taught a Hollywood way of filmmaking, you know, mise-en-scene, master shot, medium close-up, close-up, ECU, cutaway, you know. And um, in working with the youth, they're very informal. Like they don't like to lock the camera down on a tripod because they are locked up. They, they're very inventive. Like one day I came to the camp and they attached um, three bungee cords on each side of the camera and said, hey, Munoz, look, it's a bungee cam. <laughs> and the camera's moving. And um, they're very inventive. And so the way I was taught filmmaking was to take a very stately, formal Hollywood approach. The youth, in working with the youth, it liberated me from that. And I've become more radical in my approach to storytelling through cinema. Um, I crossed the line. We told never cross the sagittal plane. Well, I do all the time now because the youth emboldened me. So I feel like my work with them is a necessary part of my journey. I feel like my work as a filmmaker is informed by my interactions and my making films with them. The other thing they like is they don't like um, having to memorize lines and repeat lines because it's too robotic for them. So before we shoot a scene with them, I'll say, this is what's happening in the scene. You want her to agree to date you. And you are saying, no, that is my sister. You're not dating her. You don't want it. And I just freestyle it in free improv. So it's made me a little bit more relaxed. Uh, I use improvisation a lot. I didn't before I started working with this population. I'm more relaxed um, and, 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 and less formal. And it's interesting because when I, when I place um, Sony Pictures Entertainment, they um, support us and they give us cameras. And when we give cameras to the youth, um, the first thing they do is they point cameras back at the surveillance cam saying, I see you. You're watching me, but I'm watching you watch me. You know, they take control of the apparatus and they turn the tables. But when they're filming, they'll, I'll say, go to what interests you. They'll go to where the emotion is. Like if there's a scene between a son and an actress who's the mother crying, to go into the teardrop going down the mother's eye. And it's a very organic approach. They go to where they feel the, the emotional power is. What, what is interesting in the scene? Oh, the mother really feels bad that she wasn't the mother she should have been the first 14 years of his life. And it's, it's a necessary part. They're making me a better filmmaker. My work with them informs my path. So. My next project, it's a feature film called Make the Moon. It was developed at Sundance years ago. And um, it's based on my, my twin brother and I growing up in San Jose. And it focuses on a mother um, who has um, two sons that are mixed race. I also have a sister and a brother, but I'm focusing on my twin brother and I for this. But in this film, there are three young people that really impress me as actors. Uh, one is a young woman from the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. Two others are from LA. They're in the film. I'm casting them. Then there's six other youth that are going to work on the film. And I'm going to pay them. And they're going to learn what it's like to be on an independent film set. And they're going to continue to develop their skills as filmmakers. So this is in alignment with both. Um, I am going after my Hollywood goal, making this feature film. But I'm also engaging formerly incarcerated youth. So. I'm combining the two and my dream is to, I'm currently working on a plan. I'd like to open up a film academy in the next three to five years. And the film academy would be kind of like the homeboy industries of filmmaking. Take ex-gang members, youth who have been affected by the foster care system, youth affected by the juvenile justice system. Not only train them to work on, on music video, commercial or TV sets or movie sets, but to create develop and make their own content wow. because they have a different take on things. So to me, the, the real exciting stuff is happening in the margins. They're not part of mainstream media. They're not part of mainstream society. They have their own secret coded language of 
how to tell a story with film. They don't do the master shot, medium close up, close up, easy. They go, oh, just get the shot, get the fucking shot, get the shot of her crying. Let's move on, you know. Um, and they they love the they use their own language to to um, take ownership, like a slate. They don't call a slate a slate. They call it a shield. And I asked this kid Jimmy, why do you call it a shield? Oh, in case bullets come through, it could dodge the bullets. Um, a company move, when you move the, the cast and the crew, they call it in trans. That's when a youth is being transported from a correctional facility to the court to go oh, to a hearing. Okay. Um, they don't see, say quiet on the set. set. They, said, they say quiet in the ghetto or quiet on the barrio. And they also said, don't say it's MOS, just say it's NFS, no friggin' sound. So they, they come up with their own vernacular and own language to allow them to take ownership. But it's this very informal, radical approach to filmmaking that inspires me and informs me. So they're actually helping me unlearn what USC taught me, which is very formal Hollywood. Just because you're being taught that doesn't mean that's the only way to make films. So my films, I feel now, are more... Um, alive and more expressive because I let go of some of that old school training, you know? They're very radical with the camera. They do things like turn it upside down and do cartwheels with it whilst there's a chase scene. And it's that type of approach that, that informs my current approach to filmmaking. Just like you said that some of the quote unquote, not worst students, but maybe most arms crossed resistant turn out to be some of the best. Do you think that's the same in quote, traditional film schools? Some of the worst students, maybe, you know, in the back, eh, who is this? And then actually they turn out to be the best. Yeah, did you know, do you know the story about Jim Morrison at USC? S sort of. Um, yeah, yeah he, did, he did two films and people said, you have no, you don't have one creative molecule in your body, what are you doing here? And he was making some, I actually saw two of the films, they were in the USC archive and they're really, really interesting. And of course he went on to be in The Doors Right. But, um, um, you know, I, I went to a film school that was very entrenched in, you know, traditional, conventional Hollywood film storytelling. And what I'm trying to express is that that's good. It's important to know that. But the youth offer a different approach to filmmaking, which I find much more exciting and much more real and gets audiences to react more. You know, they also don't believe in these unrealistic, fake, they call it fake ass delusional endings where everything's fine. Because sometimes everything doesn't end fine, but you keep going. One of my students, um, Fila, said, you know, sometimes things don't end well, but maybe the next situation will end well. And you just hope that things end well, and you, you celebrate it when stories end well. And when they don't end well, you think about what happened, and you learn from it, and you grow from it, and you move on. So in the films we do, they're not all these, you know, neatly tied up endings because that's not the way life is, right? It's no. not. Sometimes things don't become resolved. No, they don't. You might have a fallout with a cousin or a family member and that you may spend the rest of your life going back and forth thinking that it's going to get there, but it doesn't. That's what life is, us trying to love and be loved and also pay the bills and feed ourselves and experience warmth and joy, right? And go they to the, this. Yeah, go to the Lemley as much as you can. Yeah, it's yeah. great movies, yeah. yeah. And by the way, the Lemley didn't pay us to say that, but yeah. <laughs> they do have some great movies. And what, the beauty of art house cinema is that oftentimes things don't always, there's an ambiguous ending or, or it's not always perfect, whereas other theaters it might be more neatly tied up. And I can see how they would relate to that. There's a film, two Latino youths made a film called Family Problems in um. It was a young Latino man who made a film about his mother who was um, what they called a glasshead addicted to crystal meth. And um, one of the boys, Julio, said, hey, Munoz, this film is about Alan's mom, but he doesn't want you to know, but don't say anything. I said, okay, I won't. So the next day, Alan came up to me and said, hey, Munoz, this film about this mother who's like, addicted to meth, that's about Julio's mom, but he doesn't want you to know. Well, both their mothers were addicted to, to meth. And so we made this film. And in the film, the boy is begging the mother to go into rehab. He finally gets the courage to say, Mom, please go into rehab. And she does go to rehab in the film. 
So both boys invited their mothers to the film. And I said, if you invite your mothers to this film, it's really unfair if you don't tell them what the film is about. You have to tell them because they might experience shame. They might experience rage, humiliation or anger. We cannot drop a bomb on your moms. We have to let them know. So I called um, their mothers and the boys were on the phone with me. I said, look, um, this is what the film is about. Um, are you comfortable seeing a film about a young boy who wants his mom to go into rehab? Both agreed. They wanted to watch the film. Both went. This was at the Sony Theaters. Saw the film, broke down into tears. Within 48 hours, both mothers were in rehab. Oh, wow. Because it took a film made by their sons, and they saw their son saying, Mama, Mama, I need you, Mama, I need you. You need to stop using and you need to go to rehab. I love you no matter what, but I need you in my life. I need a mom. So the film is not only affect the individual, but also the family and the community. And so even things like that, it, the films were so real. So my demand for authentic representation is much more pronounced because of my students. I don't like fake stuff. This has no resonance, you know?